In this video, we're gonna be talking about three different ways that I use ChatGPT as an instructional designer, both during the interview process as well as in my day to day. I like to think of ChatGPT as my assistant because it does help serve for inspiration when I'm writing and working and can help me overcome brain block when I'm doing some of my least favorite tasks like writing multiple choice questions. So if this video sounds interesting and you're curious to learn how to use ChatGPT as an instructional designer, keep watching. All right, so here you can see we have ChatGPT. You can just do chatgpt.com and you click start now. It'll bring you to like the free version of ChatGPT. I don't need the paid version for this, so feel free if you're just playing around with it, you can just use the free version. So the first way that I like to use ChatGPT as an instructional designer is for interview practice. Now there's two ways that you can use this. You can ask ChatGPT to give you example questions. Please give me example interview questions for an instructional design interview. So as you can see on the screen, here's some example interview questions tailored for an instructional design position. Number one, can you describe your experience with instructional design? How do you stay current with the trends? Can you provide an example of a challenging project you've worked on? How you overcame these challenges? These are very like typical instructional design interview questions that ChatGPT has probably scraped and generated from like hundreds of different blog posts. So they've kind of consolidated them all for you here. Let's see, what is your process for creating a new instructional design module or course? How do you incorporate feedback from learners? All of these I've asked at some point or have been asked um, during an instructional design interview. So I do think this is a really good place to start. It gives you, you know, common questions. I have a video about this as well, but if you want something all right here, you know, you can just use ChatGPT to generate some examples. There's some about learning theories and methodologies. People ask this question, so maybe be ready for this one, but for me personally, I don't know. I've never found any real value <laughs> in asking or answering this question. Anyways, uh, yeah, all of these, as I'm looking through great practice questions, you can take, you know, five, 10 of these, generate answers for them on your own, and then you know, we can talk about how I use ChatGPT in the second way for interview practice. So the second way that I would use ChatGPT for interview practice is once you've created your answer to some sort of, uh, of these questions, I would run it through ChatGPT and be like, hey, can you please make my answer more succinct? Succinct and follow the star interview response method. And then I would, you know, insert your response here. And I would just push enter and then I would have ChatGPT just kind of review whatever interview response that I had generated so that I can make sure that it's like really succinct because when you're interviewing, you wanna make sure that your answers are tight and to the point and not telling some long story that eventually gets to the point. So yeah, that's two ways I would use ChatGPT from the interview perspective as an instructional designer. All right, let me refresh the page and now I'll kind of show you how I would use it kind of for work or personal projects as an instructional designer. Now let me make sure that I say that you should not put any like proprietary work information into ChatGPT because ChatGPT uses it to train its models. So any like private information should not go in here. But if it's like something that you have in your company's help center or if it's like a blog post or you're copy and pasting from some like external thing from your company into ChatGPT, that should be okay because it's common public Googleable information. So the next way I like to use ChatGPT as an instructional designer is to use it to generate summaries. And I use these summaries either, you know, at the beginning of a training or like to give some sort of overview of a learning path that I'm building. And so I'll just kind of show you how I use it to create a summary. So we'll use an example article. I have this personal article on my website 
So uh, let's pretend that this is a course and I want to create a summary for it. I'm going to take all the content and copy it. And like I said, it's okay to use this type of content because it's externally facing. It's public knowledge, like you can just search this up. And I will go back to ChatGPT and I will say, I like to say please, I don't know. Please give me a summary. Oh, let's say, give me a one paragraph graph summary of the following information and then I'll just paste it all right to successfully transfer I'm realizing now this is more of like an end of course summary so instead I will ask it to create a beginning or like an overview based on this content so create an introductory overview paragraph for the following information. Okay, so let's see what they put. Transitioning from... Yes, yeah, so this is much better. So in this guide, we'll talk you through essential steps for tailoring your LinkedIn, etc. So this is much better. I can I would say if you are using something from ChatGPT, it gives you the option to copy it, but I would never, ever, ever use something directly from ChatGPT because it's very obvious if you're like a writer, if you have experience writing, um, like professionally, it's very obvious that this is copy pasted from ChatGPT. So you can use this as a starting point because I know sometimes writing like a summary or an overview paragraph is like really the last thing that you wanna be doing. So use this as a starting point. Definitely make sure that you take time to like read through it and edit it to make it sound more like how you write. So yeah, I like to use ChatGPT to give me inspiration for like a summary or an overview for like a course or a training. Let me refresh for the very last thing I wanna show you. So another thing, and this is huge for me because I do not like writing multiple choice or test questions. So one way I like to use ChatGPT is as to use it for like inspiration for multiple choice questions that you want to use like just, you know, for basic like recall or like understand or, you know, just basic knowledge checks. So let me show you again. We'll just use the same uh, article. So like I said, this is how to edit your LinkedIn for an instructional design role. We can pretend it's like some training module or something. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, please create a multiple choice question for the following information. And like I said before, I use this as inspiration. I'm not gonna just like copy paste whatever it gives me. So I paste in my blog post and then we'll see what type of question it comes up with. Okay. When transitioning from teaching to an instructional design role, which section of your LinkedIn profile should you focus on to showcase your related experience and skills? Yeah. So yeah, this is a uh, one example and then we can say, can you generate a second question um, relating, or um, let's see. True, let's say a true false question. True false question, please. True or false in the experience section of your LinkedIn profile, it is important to focus on detailing your experience with managing student data and class sizes when transitioning to an instructional design role. Correct answer, false. Yeah, I mean, these are great inspirations for, you know, I think when you get to the end of writing your course or your like training, sometimes the last thing you wanna do is write your multiple choice questions. So this can be a place where you can get inspiration. Obviously I wouldn't just copy paste these because I would reword things a little bit differently, but it does give me a starting point when I'm having like brain block or you know, just I'm not feeling 
the right answers. And that's it for today's video. If you've used ChatGPT before, please let me know how you've used it. I'm super curious. I do want to know because there's a ton of different ways that you can use it to kind of make your life a little bit easier or help you overcome brain block. And if you like to learn a little bit more about transitioning from teaching to instructional design, check out my latest book, Teacher to Instructional Designer. I'll link it down below. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.